think your car has what it takes, well, guess what? King of the Gallery is for you. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're going to be putting two cars head-to-head -head competing, and the one with the most votes gets the crown and is the king of the gallery. We're going to be doing this for eight weeks, and the longer that you stay king, the more prizes you can win. We're going to be giving away everything from Fit Ministries banners to merch to gift cards. This is going to be super dope. So get your car in at fitministries.com forward slash ad and get in the gallery and then shoot us an email at kotg at fitmentindustries.com. And that's it. Good luck. Uh, excuse me, though. I got to get this crown. <laughs> Honda Civic SIs have been around forever and especially in the aftermarket scene. In 2017, we finally seen these bad boys get a turbocharger, which was a pretty big deal. Now we have the beautiful 10th generation. But is it worth modifying? Are parts cheap? Are they expensive? Is it reliable? This is the ultimate buyer's guide to the 10th gen Honda Civic Si. Let's get into it. So trunk space isn't bad on these, but uh, that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about the aftermarket ability on these cars, which is phenomenal because it's a Honda Civic. If you didn't know, they have some of the best aftermarket scene that's out there, and that's what makes these cars so desirable along with its price point. You're gonna see these 2017s to current starting out at an MSRP of around $24,000, which pretty much anyone can hop into as long as you have a semi-decent credit score. But we don't need to get into all that. I'm not your damn bank. Let's get into some of the mods. So what's awesome about these cars is they're 5x114.3. If you didn't know, that's like one of the most common bolt patterns out there, which is good news for you because pretty much any aftermarket wheel manufacturer is gonna have 5 by 114.3. On this, we have 18 by 9.5 plus 35 Artists of Titans, which line up really well. So for tires, it's 235, 40, 18, and that's all around, which makes a flush fitment on this car, no rubbing, and it's on Eibach lowering springs. That's one thing we'll have to touch on is the electronic dampening that's in this car might make picking out suspension a little more tricky than you think. So if you guys didn't know, these cars have electronic dampening, which is really freaking cool, especially for a Honda Civic. Uh, you press this little sport button here, adjust it, makes the ride a little stiffer. Uh, let's go try it out. All righty. So what I'm talking about with the electronic damping, damping, dampening, damping, damping, I always say it wrong, is there's a couple options here and that's either you go lowering springs and you retain that factory suspension with the factory struts that's gonna keep that damp damping in place or you go coilovers, you delete that, but you say, screw it, I wanna lay frame, I wanna throw sparks as I'm driving. Or you just wanna get lower than lowering springs. And that's what you have to decide. There is no right answer. It's basically what you wanna do with the car. Hell, maybe you even wanna keep stock suspension. I don't know. Maybe you wanna lift it and off-road it. That's not up to me. I'm just here to tell you it's a little bit different than something I'm running currently into with my Supra. I bought coilover, so now I have to get an electronic disabling kit because uh, otherwise all the factory stuff goes haywire because it has nothing you know, to hook up to. Realistically, in this car, I remember when Maya picked it up, because um, if you didn't know, this is my fiance's car. I immediately just wanted to autocross the hell out of it because of the handling. These cars feel good. They are responsive. The steering's tight. It revs out pretty dang high at 6,500 RPM, and the shifter feels really good. It feels mechanical. It, it doesn't feel like a wet log in an ax, you know, like thunk, like I feel like my Cobalt SS, when that was stock, felt absolutely terrible, but this one has a more mechanical feel to it. Now you can get aftermarket shift knobs, all that good stuff, spice up the interior a little bit, but that will not make up for the 2017s and 2018s not having a damn volume knob. 
It is the worst thing. It has this touch screen thing where you just beep, 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 or the steering wheel, beep, 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 and it is literally terrible. But 2019 and up, Honda was like, hey guys, we fucked up, that's our bad. And they put it in a volume knob. They also made a couple other differences. But anyways, getting into more aftermarket stuff. Any turbocharged four cylinder car is gonna be much more responsive if you pick up some bolt-ons and a tune. That is the best things you can do. And the beautiful thing about a Honda Civic Si is parts are gonna be pretty affordable and the car is gonna be pretty reliable. Now, a couple downsides, a couple maybe big downsides. The 10th gen Civic Si, I hope I don't get a lot of hate for this, they generally don't sound that great with an aftermarket exhaust. This isn't one of the cars where you'll be straight piping and going and blasting by people's houses at 3 a.m. unless you want to be a D-bag. And that's just the way it is. These cars do not sound absolutely fantastic. This car had an aftermarket exhaust on it when we picked it up. It was bunk, not good. We put the factory exhaust with the HDMI port on the back, back on. Just not great sounding cars. Now there is some exhaust out there that you can look at that give it a better tone and you'll be all good. But it's not one you want to make super loud. Another thing is with turbocharged vehicles, a lot of the time people want to make turbocharged noises. You want to blow off valve. You want to hear that when you get on it. These run off a diverter valve. You didn't know what that is. That's what recirculates the air back into the system um, and doesn't let it off to the atmosphere. So you're not going to hear it now there is some aftermarket options um, and you could do a blow off valve, but it's not gonna be benefiting the car in any way. If anything, it probably is some slight negatives. It's gonna make your car run just slightly more rich. It's gonna throw everything a little bit out of whack. It's not gonna hurt your car by any means, um, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. But just know you're not going to get any benefit from a atmospheric blow off valve on this. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't make dummy power and make these cars freaking insane because MA Performance has done that and we can insert that B-roll clip here. So all this talk about tuning and more power is great, but one thing you'll have to consider is the stock clutch in these cars are literally garbage. Oh, hey! You will need to upgrade it. Even if you're gonna be driving this car hard on a stock tune, upgrade the clutch, they are not good. But yes, if you're going for any more power whatsoever, you might as well put that clutch on the docket to be done as soon as possible because these cars don't like it. Uh, another thing to remember is there is a coupe and sedan. The coupe looks fantastic, it's a little more sportier. The sedan, a little more practical and in my opinion still looks just as good. But one thing to keep in mind is the coupes weren't made in Japan. So not as much cosmetic aftermarket availability. Uh, you're gonna see more stuff for the sedan than the coupe but it's nothing insane. Uh, just something to think about while you're uh, picking up one of these. So one thing that's weird is uh, the blind spot camera that's on the side view mirror. Why Honda decided to go with that over just like the blind spot metering that comes in most other cars where it's just sensors and lets you know is beyond me because it's kind of a pain in the ass. When you put on your right turn signal, it's gonna take that over. It, that camera is gonna come on. So like if you're on GPS and you're looking where to turn next and you're taking a right and then you're trying to figure out which lane you're supposed to be in next, well, guess what? You're looking at the person behind you and trying to figure out what the hell you're doing. It has its pros, it has its con, but I, I really wish that it just came with those like blind spot metering things rather than the camera. Not to mention it was a pain in the ass because a traffic cone came flying up, hit Maya's mirror, took it completely out. We had to source another mirror and a mirror with a camera integrated into it is expensive as fuck. Of course, the one with the camera in it is the one that got damaged. Not to mention now when I turn on my right signal here, it comes up with a screen that says aiming is not complete because I need to take it to the Honda dealership to have it calibrated and know you can't just do it at home. There's specific sensors and stuff that's needed in order to calibrate the camera on the mirror. 
It's just a big pain in the ass. Let's get on it a little bit, see how it feels, make sure I'm in sport mode, I am. So. Oh, it turned off. Damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, this car, pretty bone stock. We have the Eibach lowering springs, the Artisa wheels, which is a nice upgrade because the stock wheels are heavy as hell on these cars. So definitely would recommend going to aftermarket wheels. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll give her a little bit. We'll see how she feels. We'll pop her in a second here. We are in sport mode. Hit that boost, 22 PSI. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a fun car. It, it's nice. Like you can still get up and go. You can get out of your own way. Is it crazy fast? You're burning through the tires in a second? No, but with some aftermarket modifications, you can definitely make it scoot a little better. And that's what these cars are all about. They're all about that tunability, making it your own, getting into the aftermarket stuff a little bit. Um, but if you want it to be that daily driver, get good fuel mileage, you also can go that route with it. Overall, these are super solid cars. And I don't know, for the money, I'd say they're, they're fast enough to be fun with. It's not fast, it's quick. It's a good time. So, what do I think about the 10th generation Honda Civic Si? I think they're great cars. I think they get good gas mileage. I think the 10th generation looks sharp as hell. And thank you, Honda, for putting a damn turbocharger in it after all these years of asking. I think it did everything in the right direction. It has a few quirks, and it's a great car to pick up if you want to get into the car scene, start modifying cars, learn about cars, because it's very forgiving. What I don't think is this is a car you pick up to head to the drag strip and make a ton of power. Can you do that? Absolutely. You can make any car you want to fast if your pockets are deep enough. But this, this is more about just having fun. This is your one car that you have. You got to get to work. You got to get back. But on the weekends, you want to go cruise with your friends. You want to slam this on the ground, make it look good. You have all that ability with all the aftermarket options that are out here. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to read every single one. This is a new series, so we would love some feedback. What did we miss out on? What do you want to hear about? Just let us know. And don't forget, wheels, tires, and suspension at fitmentindustries.com, especially all the ones mentioned in this video. We appreciate you guys. And uh, where's a faster car?